MoMA PS1 has opened its doors to us for a preview of the exhibition Greater New York. A show by that name has taken place every five years here since 2000. There are some 400 or so works by about 150 artists. We're going to give you a quick walkthrough. One of the first works that greets you as you enter PS1's courtyard is David Hammonds's African American flag, in which he has replaced the red, white, and blue of the Stars and Stripes with the African colors of red, black, and green. And the work very playfully suggests an African colonization of the states and refers to the dark side of American history, a country whose wealth and power was of course built on slavery. The artist is a bit of a recluse and a trickster. One of the first works for which he became known was a performance in which he sold snowballs on the sidewalk outside of the Cooper Union in the East Village that was, at the time, tuition-free. In its reference to the darker side of American history, the flag is a great, if chance, juxtaposition with the Volkswagen-sponsored dome event space that also sits in the courtyard, Volkswagen having been in the news for sinister reasons just recently. Here we have a group of photographs by Deanna Lawson, who is perhaps best known for very beautiful, lush, posed portraits of strangers in domestic settings, people she often refers to as her family. Here, we have a series of images of her actual family member, her cousin Jasmine, during her visits with her husband during his time in a correctional facility upstate, and a compassionate and intimate view of people who are often demonized and disenfranchised. Now, just across the gallery from Deanna Lawson's photographs, we have some works by a New York artist named Getty Saboni that in many ways couldn't be more different in their emotional tone and formally. They are artworks that he has found in thrift stores and then simply flipped the image back to front in each case. So we're seeing the tape holding the image to the mat, and it's a blank white surface in each case. Part of what makes this interesting is that in a gallery with Deanna Lawson and another African-American artist, Kevin Beasley, this is partly about whiteness in art. Adding to the playful sense of these artworks, the titles, as you go along one to the other, form a little poem. The first few, for example, are called Fork Maker, Little Baker, and The Shiver Taker. Here's a sculpture by a young Puerto Rican artist named Ignacio Gonzalez Lang. Obviously a very provocative object. He's created a KKK-style robe that, by its design, tells you that it is worn by a very exalted member of the organization called the Exalted Cyclops. Artists often farm out aspects of the production of their work, and he's done that in a very interesting and meaningful way here, in which the seamstress who created the robe is actually a member of a family that for generations has been part of this hate group. The embroidery on top, by contrast, is done by a Mexican immigrant who lives in New York. Combined in this one object is the tension between the multicultural ideal constantly under threat and the nativist bigotry of the KKK. A sculpture like this, of course, couldn't be more timely with Donald Trump and the other members of the Republican Party vying to be president, racing to vilify, in specific, Mexican immigrants as criminals and freeloaders and so on. The sculpture finds itself in a large, beautiful, sunlit gallery that is largely devoted to artists working with the figure. There's a great work by Hugo Rondinone of a very eerie, spooky figure leaning up against a wall. A terrific sculpture of Lovers by Elizabeth Jaeger. And in what might be a humorous touch by the curators, Ignacio Gonzalez Lang's KKK robe is placed in the corner as if uh, in detention in school.